Welcome back to Story Recap. In the first scene, we see the interstellar starship Avalon traveling through space on its way to the colony planet Homestead 2. The ship is transporting 5,000 passengers and 258 crew members who are all in hibernation. The starship is 30 years into its 120-year journey, when suddenly the ship encounters an asteroid belt. As the ship collides with numerous smaller asteroids, the ship's defenses are being weakened. The main shield is given extra power, but as the ship collides with a massive asteroid, a force field fails and the ship takes damage. The ship starts to do automated repairs, but one of the sleep pods malfunctions, and the passenger Jim Preston, who is a mechanical engineer wakes up. As Jim's pod opens, and he becomes conscious, an avatar assists with his awakening, and informs him that he has been in suspended animation for 120 years, and that the ship is only 4 months away from the planet Homestead 2. He is also informed about the various luxurious features of the ship, that he has the benefit of utilizing, and all the activities that he will participate in. Jim's wristband is scanned and he is led to his cabin. The following day, Jim gets ready and is both excited, and a bit anxious to meet the others aboard the ship. As Jim goes to an automated lecture explaining their journey and why they are colonizing Homestead 2, Jim starts to get worried as the lecture is intended for a whole group of people, and he is the only one there. Even though he is instructed to save his questions for the end of the course, Jim can't help but interrupt and ask why he's the only one present. Eventually he goes looking for other people. As he realizes that the female hologram cannot answer him, he finds the ship's main concourse and notices he is alone there too. He is assisted by an automated information desk. When Jim requests to meet with a real person, he is sent to speak with a steward. However, when he arrives and no one is there, he requests to speak with the captain. Even though he is unable to enter the bridge, he can see that none of the main crew members are awake either. Later, Jim goes to the observatory where he learns that the ship is actually 90 years away from Homestead 2. He quickly returns to the concourse after realizing he was awakened too soon, and sends a message to Earth begging for advice, because he doesn't know how to go back into hibernation. However, the communications system informs him that it will take 55 years to get a response. He realizes he is all alone. Jim walks around on the ship devastated when he suddenly sees another individual behind a bar. Jim gets excited and runs to talk to him. But after conversing he discovers the man is actually a robot called Arthur. Jim wants to ask him questions, but he is unable to even explain to the robot how it is possible for him to wake up early. The next morning, Jim heads to the cantina where he learns that the majority of the items on the menu are only available to gold-class passengers, and he ends up ordering a simple cup of coffee. Jim starts to work on repairing his hibernation pot, only to unsuccessfully get it working again. He then makes the decision to try to enter the ship's bridge, where the crew is hibernating, first by using his wristband which doesn't have clearance, and then by using other tools to try to get through but ultimately fails to open the door. Meanwhile, minor malfunctions in the ship's systems start to occur all over the ship. Jim visits the bar frequently to drink and chat with Arthur. Arthur persuades him to break into one of the gold-class rooms and attempt to have fun on the ship. As time goes, Jim explores more and more features of the ship, only to grow more and more miserable about being there by himself. After getting wasted one day, he stumbles upon an airlock containing spacesuits made for spacewalks. Jim puts one on and gets into the airlock, where he opens the door to the ship's outside. A lifeline is attached to his spacesuit, and Jim walks out to the ship's exterior. He releases the magnets on his boots and floats out into space. While watching the vastness of the universe, Jim starts to cry. He returns inside, removes the suit, and then goes back to the airlock without it. He pulls the lever and is prepared to put an end to everything, but he suddenly changes his mind and runs away from the airlock only to trip over a bottle he had thrown away in anger earlier. Jim gets to his feet and is immediately drawn to a woman in a pod who he can't take his eyes off. He learns her name is Aurora. He listens to her in her video bio and looks through her files in the directory and becomes obsessed with her. Jim starts to discuss her with Arthur. Jim can't stop thinking about her and he starts to consider something. He takes the pod manual and goes to see Arthur. Jim wants to open Aurora's hibernation pod, but Arthur says it's not a good idea. Some time passes, and Jim considers not to go through with his idea, but he can't help himself since he's been alone for over a year and gets determined to wake Aurora up. He works on Aurora's pod and is able to turn it on. Before she wakes up completely, Jim runs away and hides his tools. Later, he goes to the main hall, where he finds Aurora. She is confused and wonders where everyone is. Jim explains that he is the only one awake, and that her pod must have accidentally been activated. He informs her that they are far from reaching Homestead 2, and shows her his failed attempts to get into the ship's bridge. While explaining that he has been there alone for over a year, Aurora panics and runs back to try to return to her pod. Jim stops her and clarifies to her that there is no way for them to get back into hibernation. 
As they walk back to the main hall, Jim advises her to rest and walks her to her cabin. Jim, feeling bad about what he did, goes to talk to Arthur in the bar to ask Arthur not to tell Aurora that he woke her up. Aurora awakens the following morning. She returns to the concourse and inquires about the hibernation pods at the automated information desk. Jim finds her and asks her to join him for breakfast. Meanwhile, even more things start to malfunction in the ship and the cafeteria. Aurora notices that Jim has been eating the same breakfast for over a year and orders him something from the gold class menu. They discuss the prospect of fixing the pods and Aurora is not prepared to give up. Unlike Jim, after looking through research materials, she attempts to break into the ship's bridge but is unsuccessful. Meanwhile we see Jim finding more and more malfunctions around the ship. Some time later, Aurora is seen keeping journals, jogging around the ship, swimming, and keeping herself distracted. One day she approaches Jim to ask him about his reasons to leave Earth for Homestead 2. Jim explains that he is an engineer and wants to fix things, not replace things like people do on Earth. He continues by saying that he wants to build his own life, like building his own house to live in. Jim then asks about Aurora's reasons for going to Homestead 2. She answers that she intends to visit Homestead 2 for a year to talk to colonists and listen to their stories before returning to Earth, becoming the first journalist to do so, and in the process, make history. They start to get to know each other better and start to spend more time enjoying each other's company. They eat at restaurants, play basketball, go dancing, watch movies, and they visit the bar where Aurora is introduced to Arthur. This becomes a routine and they start eating at restaurants, playing basketball, watching movies and going to the bar often. One day Aurora finds a miniature model of the Empire State Building that Jim has created for her. Jim asks Aurora out on a date, which she accepts. They go to the bar for some drinks, and then head to the restaurant where Jim invites Aurora on a spacewalk. Jim leads Aurora to the airlock after dinner, where they suit up. They enter the airlock and leave the ship. As they look out in space they both hold hands. They turn off their magnetic boots and leap out into the emptiness of space. After returning to the ship, they start sharing a passionate kiss and then go to Jim's cabin to make love. The following morning while eating breakfast, Jim tells Aurora she's the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. Aurora climbs over the table to get closer to Jim. They get back to Jim's room once more. They spend more and more time together and Aurora moves in with Jim. They go jogging, eat at fancy restaurants. They explore the Avalon to find adventurous and fun things to do. One day, on Aurora's birthday, they happen to closely pass by a giant star and they enjoy the magnificent view together. Later that evening, they celebrate Aurora's birthday in a restaurant and then in the bar. Aurora tells Arthur that Jim and her have no secrets which Jim agrees to. Soon after, while Aurora stays in the bar talking to Arthur, Jim goes to the restroom to prepare a ring he made for her. Arthur tells Aurora that Jim purposefully awakened her up, not realizing he was still supposed to keep it a secret. She confronts Jim when he returns, and Jim confirms it's true, since the truth is already out. Aurora goes into complete shock and runs away. As Jim returns to his cabin, he finds that Aurora has moved to her own cabin as all her things are gone. Aurora is devastated. The following day Jim sees Aurora in the cantina and tries to apologize, but as soon as he opens his mouth she walks away. One night, when Jim is sleeping, he is awakened by an angry Aurora hitting and kicking him. Jim doesn't try to defend himself. Aurora grabs a crowbar and lifts it above her head to hit Jim, but hesitates because she can't go through with hurting him, and she leaves his cabin. The following day when Aurora is jogging, Jim tries to apologize to her using the ship's speakers, but Aurora won't listen and finally yells out in anger that he ruined her life and is unable to forgive him. Another failure occurs and the lights start to flicker in Jim's cabin. Suddenly a critical error occurs, and the ship's diagnostics system fails. Later, more of the ship's systems start to fail. Jim becomes stuck in an elevator, and the food vending machine starts to pour food out on the floor in the cantina. As Aurora tries to get breakfast, suddenly, both Jim and Aurora hear someone's voice over the ship's speakers, and they run to the main concourse, where they meet Gus, the deck chief. They introduce themselves, and explain that they all have woken up early. Gus explains to them that hibernation pods should not malfunction and that something is wrong with the ship. They all go to the ship's bridge, where Gus uses his wristband to get in. Gus sees that the ship's diagnostic system has failed, and they have to manually check all decks for malfunctions. They go to the pod chamber where Gus investigates Aurora's pod. He realizes that it has been opened by Jim, and later tells Aurora about it when meeting her on the bridge. But she explains to Gus that she already knows. They discuss if there is any way to fix the pod, but Gus informs her that there is nothing he can do to fix it. Gus suddenly feels sick, and as he leaves the bridge to go and rest, he coughs up blood. That night, Aurora goes swimming since she can't sleep. While swimming, the ship loses power, and the artificial gravity suddenly stops working. Aurora almost drowns in the floating water, and Jim and Gus start to float away from their beds. The power returns to the ship, and the gravity automatically comes back on. 
Aurora finally escapes the water successfully. Later on, the three of them meet on the bridge, where they observe all the different malfunctions that have occurred. Gus asks the computer for a timeline of the various malfunctions, and discovers that something happened to the ship two years ago. At the time Jim woke up, which caused a major system to go down somewhere, to find the main cause of the problems. All three head for the main engineering room. Gus passes out as they get there. So Jim and Aurora take him to the medical bay. After an exam they find out that Gus is dying due to hundreds of different conditions, which there is no cure for. They believe the reason for this state of health is because of his malfunctioning pod. Before Gus dies, he hands Jim his wristband so that he and Aurora have access to the whole ship. Suddenly the spacecraft begins to tremble and the engine fails. They rush toward main engineering. Right after, the robot Arthur starts malfunctioning, and Jim and Aurora save him from destroying himself. By disconnecting his power, they eventually make it to engineering, where they begin looking for the issue. They find several holes created by the asteroids that the ship collided with. When they open a hatch, Aurora is almost sucked out into space through one of the holes. Jim is almost sucked in too, but manages to hold onto the hatch. He passes a tablet to Aurora with which she is able to block the hole with. They soon discover that the temperature in the room is high, and find that the main reactor also has been hit by the asteroid. Jim believes he can fix the cooling system which has been hit by replacing the damaged part. They locate the component and replace it, but the reactor's venting system is still malfunctioning. They attempt to vent it manually but fail. Jim realizes that in order to cool the reactor down, he must open the vent door from outside the ship. They both proceed to the airlock, and as he prepares to exit, he hands Aurora Gus's wristband in case he doesn't return. As he enters the airlock, Aurora tells him that he must return because she can't live without him aboard the ship. Aurora returns to the reactor to try the manual vent again, but fails. The temperature has now reached dangerous levels. As Jim approaches the vent from the outside, a sharp object from the reactor hits Aurora in the arm. The temperature in the reactor room rises. Jim tells Aurora that he will need to manually hold the door open while she vents the reactor. She doesn't like the idea, because she doesn't want Jim to die. But Jim says that they have to do it to save everyone else on the ship. He opens the door, and instructs her to vent the reactor. And while crying, she does. The cooling of the reactor is successful. But Jim's lifeline breaks and he is thrown out into space, with no way to get back to the ship. His suit is also losing pressure due to some debris puncturing his spacesuit. Over the comm, Jim tells Aurora what happened. She runs to the airlock and puts a spacesuit on, all while Jim offers her an apology. She steps out from the ship and leaps out to catch him, but her lifeline is too short to get to him. Desperately, and with the fear of losing Jim, Aurora suddenly sees a part of Jim's lifeline that is still stuck to him and manages to get a hold of it. Back in the airlock, Jim seems unconscious, and Aurora drags him to the medical bay, only to find that he has already died, using Gus's wristband. She overrides medical protocol to revive him. The medical pod successfully brings Jim back to life and is met by Aurora who forgives him. In the next scene, Aurora is seen fixing Arthur and Gus gets a proper burial in space. Jim figures out a way to convert the medical pod into a hibernation one and informs Aurora about it. Jim wants Aurora to get inside the pod so that she can have the adventure she always wanted. But Aurora rejects his offer. Jim gets the chance to propose to Aurora again, and she accepts. The scene cuts, and we see the Avalon arrive at Homestead 2. 88 years later, we see the rest of the passengers waking up from their hibernation pods, who find the ship's interior full of trees, plants, animals and life. We also hear Aurora's voice, as she recounts the good life she and Jim had on the ship. Thank you for watching so far. If you like the movie, press the like button to help the channel grow. Subscribe to receive more videos from us. And if you want a specific movie, write it to us in the comments. See you in another movie summary.